Time to record some bass on track 3 now. Make sure the MIDI button is disengaged. It's a mono signal, so I'll press the mono button here. I'm connected to input 3 on the Fireface, so I'll select input 3 by clicking on In. I'm going to use the Magix Amphibia plugin for this. Browse to one of the presets. Set the preamp to active. Right click to open track options and give it a name and select a colour. Right click to open the metronome options. I want active while record checked but pre-count click only. The click will turn on automatically just for the pre-count. Notice when I record enable an audio track, it turns red as opposed to pink when it's a MIDI track. So we're ready to roll. Press the spacebar to stop and press it again to OK it. I'm going to switch to another zoom preset. There are two buttons for zooming the waveform in and out down here. Also accessible from a menu at the bottom right corner. Not forgetting the hotkey. Now I'm going to lasso select all three objects. Place the cursor at bar 5 and hit T to split the objects. Left click and drag the objects over to bar 9. Lasso select the other three and use the hotkey Ctrl plus D to duplicate those objects. So now I've lengthened the piece by four bars. <laughs> There's some drums at the end I want to change. I'll draw in a range for that section and double click to open the drum editor. So I'll lasso select those notes. Now select the mute tool which is the cross icon and mute the selected notes. I want to add a crash at the end so select the pencil tool then left click to insert the crash at the beginning of bar 12. Have a quick listen. Click OK to keep the changes or cancel if you don't want to. I'm placing the cursor at the position where I want to edit a bass note and zooming in. Have a quick listen. I'm going to transpose that F up to B flat. Place the cursor, select the object and hit T. Select the clock icon for pitch shift and time stretch mouse mode. Now I can grab the object handle and raise the pitch up by five semitones. Holding down shift as you move the mouse allows you to make finer adjustments. The note ends too early so I'll place the cursor on the fourth beat, press T and hit delete. Grab the handle at the bottom right and time stretch it to the right length. So that gives you a small insight into using pitch shift and time stretch mouse mode. 
Also, don't forget to switch back to normal mouse mode once you're finished. I actually want to change the kick drum now. Unmute the kick at bar 12 so it hits with the cymbal and move the one before that back to the fourth beat of bar 11. Next I'm going to record some percussion so I'll right click on the track options again and type in a name for the track and also give the WAV file a name. Not forgetting to choose a colour of course. It's just a single mic so I'll click on the mono button and it's connected to input 1. Add a touch of reverb. I'm using the hotkey R to start recording. That should be fine for what I'm going to show you. Place the cursor just before the fifth bar and enable solo. I'll turn on the click as a reference. Press T to split the object and I'll delete the one on the left. Next hold down Shift Z to switch to zoom mouse mode and I'm going to zoom in to that section of audio. I'm going to deliberately move it so it's out of time. Up to the tempo menu and select audio quantization wizard. There's a slider called sensitivity which I'm moving to the right. Now some red AQ markers are appearing on the transients. That's them. I'm going to change the grid from 16 to 8. Then click on Split at Transients. Then press Quantize Audio Object Position and they snap to the grid. So it's easy to fix any timing discrepancies using this method. I'm just resizing the object so it's four bars long. Delete the bit in front. Lasso select the objects and drag them to the beginning of the timeline. Now I'm going to use freeze track to make them one object. I'll turn off the mono button. You can use glue objects instead of freeze if you wish, but freeze is more flexible in some ways. Anyway, I'm selecting Build Loop Object from the right-click menu, so now I can drag the newly created loop out as far as I need. It's a very simple part, so I'm going to spice it up using one of the Magix plugins called Ecox, which is a vintage-style delay. I've modified one of the presets. Grab the time stretch and pitch shift tool and I'm going to lower the pitch by one semitone. <laughs> 